Yes, boys, yes, we are doing Panopticon. Panopticon is what we are doing. No, but honestly, yeah, it is. <laughs> fucking. This album, boys, fucking the scars of man in a once nameless wilderness. Ah, bloody, yeah, fucking. This fucking album, boys, this album, as you already know, Probably. Jesus Christ, it's as long as a fucking a titty fuck over here, boys. It is longer than a fucking, I don't even know, a shitty play, boys. It is bloody longer than anything. Anything. Well, not as long as me, yeah, fuck. But, nah, it's not, it's not shit at all, boys. It's bloody immersive. This shit is fuck. Fucking just beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Although slightly harder to digest for a review than, um... An oversized uh, carrot cake. These fucking analogies, boys. Number eins. Watch the lights fade. Okay, I will. There you go. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, ah! Fucking. Yes, the accordion texture on this song is surprisingly calming. The instrumental layers here build up as gradually and as naturally as a swelling storm front with extra chords on the acoustic and bass drum just coloring the fucking backdrop of the accordion here crooning along it's a fascinating intro to the album honestly did not expect it to grab my attention as much as it did for the minimalism you know that was scattered throughout orally but fucking i'm telling you boys the uh, crackling of the fire and the owls um hooting are very welcoming textures god damn it so good so wintry so good ah. and <laughs> This song is a far cry from the intro straight away. The trems with this band as ever. Uh, my god, boys. My god. What was that? Jesus Christ. Uh, pitch shift it. My god. Nah, alright. Uh, <laughs> there are so many catchy uh, instances of different falling tremolo picked guitars here again and again. They just capture my imagination, boys. And my attention. It is this uh, disharmonious cacophony in a lot of ways, yet it's so infectious, empowering, and uh, even layered, despite the dissonance, boys. The drummer's uh, ride notes, especially, are so crisp. I love the constant variable feels. Just how fucking bunta he's going off in this track. Fucking bunta, boys. A melodic riff at about three and a half minutes in with the pounding drums is a highlight of the song. The addition of the violin is poignant and fucking not ill-placed at all, mate, with the cheeky little crows just cawing in the fucking background because why not mate just fucking add to the atmosphere <laughs> the coral swelling is pretty pretty tight it's pretty all right in that fucking yeah with a with the backup vocals mate it's all right and yeah this song finishes on a high with these wailing guitar leads the violins as well harmonizing by their side with a sliding tempo and groove and throaty screams just fucking goosebumps boys a real highlight here Goosebumps. Blitherman. Ah, fucking. Ah. Jesus. Fucking. Melodic lead here is a great tone as it soars above. Uh, you know, on top of the cacophonous mix here and convincing passages and solos. Sounds like a diamond being torn apart in a veil of volcanic magma and ash. Yeah. The drumming is, uh, again, consistently intricate, variable, and off the fucking wall, off the chain, switching up so many styles and so much detail and tempos, boys. And about five minutes in, there are these chunky, raunchy riffs that transcend into a fucking funeral doom metal tempo and styling before going back into that faster blast beat tempo with the fucking lead rephrasing the motif again and again in this tireless loop for ah, sheep in ah. wolves clothing ah. there are a lot of parallels uh in this track in terms of the faster tempos and uh drumming not to mention the lead reinstating uh, a musical motif again and again and again. Yeah, because of the progressions in the instrumental layers here and the sheer catchiness of it all, it doesn't really get old either. It feels almost like uh, running down a train track that is laid with the same sleepers, but a, you know, a mountainous landscape that's ever changing as it soars right past you before you can take it in because you're going so fucking fast. How's that for an analogy, boys? It doesn't just stick to the one groove either. The complexion of the song changes and progresses until the climaxing finish, which is, again, pretty satisfying. Satisfying, boys. A ridge where the tall pines once stood. Ah, oh, fuck it. Ah, the ridge. The ridge. What someone think of the ridge? It used to have tall pines. Now it's just dirt and rubble and dust. And grass blades. I don't want grass blades. I want tall pines because they look nice when I look at them fucking ridge from my backyard. Ah. 
My god, I love the textures in this song, everything from the hollering bird calls to the crackling of the fire and the rumblings of the storm, outside the cabin fucking yeah. The tone of the acoustic as well, it's just so bright, clean and crisp, I love the chords being plucked, it's so calm and- However, having said that, I don't enjoy the monologue over the top, I understand why it's there of course, conceptually and everything else, but I was just happy, you know, that it was less than a couple lines basically. <laughs> And god, I hate making comparisons to um, game music, but The Witcher actually has fantastic game music, the third one I mean, and when the violins kick in, I do get a bit of nostalgia, just feeling that sort of, that rhythm and stuff, yeah, I just, I don't know, I get Witcher vibes. And Avski, and Avski. Avski. The vocals are so convincing in how they howl in pain, like they've been unearthed in the eye of a what is that? And when this song pounds into that fucking tempo, that pounding, pounding into that pounding tempo even, uh, that sentence is as redundant as this album. Seven, The Singing Wilderness. I love how the doubles pound underneath and bassy undertones. And as per usual, there's a catchy melodic leads brawling throughout the song interwoven with these intricate displays of drumming, humming bass lines and cavernous buried growls. It's very <laughs> similar compositionally to the songs before in that regard for sure and the progression in the final quarter is climactic as fuck boys It progresses naturally like a bonsai tree the uh, interchange in the time signatures especially <laughs> eight <laughs> snow bird and branches Oh, no, the poor branches. What's up with think of the branches? I'd like the other spoken word I actually enjoy the one at the start of the song a fuck ton of roo, uh, you know the Bluttering on about the saplings of red pines and the bloody profound analogies, boys, yeah, the atmosphere is fully fleshed out. But yeah, actually the dude's voice here is uh, very warm and uh, homespun and calming to me. Soothing even. But the song starts off so muddied and buried in uh, its own dissonance with a lead wallowing in the background with these sort of magnetic shrill tones. I love the tempo, 8 minutes in with these subtle traces of motifs being revisited and a motley of textures. Having time to breathe before the tempo just crawls and then stutters back in with that familiar blast beat boys. Number 9, number 9, number 9, the moss beneath the snow. What someone think of the moss? It's buried by the snow as well. A necessary break in music here at the start with the waves lapping in and out and the most contented and wholesome thing you can fucking think of, basically. The guitar purrs with no lack of uh, reverb and crispiness in front of this almost science fiction chord before the drums kick in and the song starts with this smoldering glow and that doom metal-like tempo, but without the funeral procession vibes. The dissonance, feedback, and distortion caves in the backdrop whilst a uh, whirling post-rock-esque sort of guitar lead, well, leads it into the next uh, phrase of the track. Yeah. Yet still, there's so much room uh, for the instruments to maneuver in the mix, it doesn't feel really cacophonous and just fucking, just fucking. <laughs> Yeah, it decides from there to revisit the uh, acoustic strumming before it inexplicably turns into a Sunkill Moon song. <laughs> I mean, I'm joking, I'm joking, but the similarities here are fucking uncanny with the backup vocals and the strumming especially. The lyrical content is suitably evocative as well, you can feel the bleak wintry edge biting in the throat that so breathes it. Fucking poetry. In so many ways this is a great track, in part because it breaks up that formulaic crashing uh, dissonance with every other song in the first half and instead replaces it with feeling and atmosphere and these sort of burning, lumbering tempos. It's just beautiful, honestly. It's a really gorgeous piece of music. <laughs> the Wandering Ghost. This song came as a bit of a surprise listening to this album for the first time, especially you know, with those bluegrass strings and strumming, bloody singing and crooning about whiskey and years passing by and winter's blues. Mate, get to the fucking beach. It almost makes me feel like, damn bloody penny of the optican, mate. Come down to Australia and catch a wave by the beach. See how your music pans out then, hat huh? The pan, the, the, <laughs> the pun opticon. <laughs> But no, you will love it, mate. You will love the beach. Just calm down, mate. Jack is shrimp on the barbie. No, but honestly, get some fucking sun in you, mate. Jesus. Nice bit of storytelling here. <laughs> and the sound is more than well executed. Honestly, though, those uh, plucked chords and tonal layers just feels like the uh, musical equivalent to hey to me. Uh, so not the biggest fan personally, but, you know, because it's ho. 
<laughs> Four oh, walls of bone yeah. are the same Americana textures, including an accordion fill out this track with various tittering phrases, which are intricate enough to enjoy in of themselves, almost Eastern sounding. His vocals here as well are very somber, so lonely and whittled. Of all sun and people, it seems it's fucking heart-wrenching, mate. I would joke about the pain here, but honestly, it's pretty fucking bloody overwhelming. I did not expect to be taken in by the dude's cleans, his baritone, his timber, when I first heard it in the first, you know, part of this fucking part. Ah, part of this part. <clears throat> but, again, it's heartfelt, it's real, and again, I do get Sun Kill Moon uh, vibes sometimes when the backup vocals just re-enter the mix. And the accordion and the uh, minimalistic additions it makes holds the bond of this track together. Overall, a, actually a really great track. It almost does uh, lose momentum and direction, almost on purpose towards the end, mind you. Definitely overstays its welcome a decent amount. Not something I'll jam at the beach particularly. More for the fire when the fucking Antarctic uh, currents whip in and all that kind of shit. Number 12, yeah, Across argument. Abandoned. What's that when think of the cross recognize again some definite post-rock influence with the guitar leads throughout the beginning of this track this song however despite sharing many elements of the loss does not captivate me in the same way the vocal melodies if you could even call them that meander and i don't sense an engaging progression in the instrumentation so really just a low in songwriting here for me number 13 <laughs> fucking beast rider this song is a really chill slow burner somehow enjoyed this a lot more despite its laid-back uh, composition one thing that must be said about part two of this album is how well the textures are layered. I never feel anything but love for most of the guitar work that works and weaves its way in through each of these uh, songs like a termite does wood. 14, not much will change when I'm gone. I appreciate the uh, different cadence he adopts in this song. It somehow has more bite on occasions, more venom, more impetus. Even the lyrical content here seems emboldened by his delivery. There's a sense of existential angst in this as well, in the hopelessness of existence at the very least. But when those drums kick in, that drive and build with that bluegrassy guitar lead, yes boys. This song in general just has more energy, more blues, more drive without leaving the fucking lumbering tempo and that sexy groove. 15 yeah, echoes in the snow. Again, there's a more impassioned, bitter delivery of the vocals here, which immediately captured my attention so much more. But yeah, the uh, strongly strung and uh, strummed guitar here, the violins, the layering, it's gorgeous, not to mention the storytelling and the progressions from the verses. It is great, boys. Yeah, the itch, I almost said the bitch, but anyway. Again, something about the homespun charm here. It warms me despite the impressionistic and downtrodden lyricism. The harmonica is somehow soothing the whole song Song is to be fair yet another song in this part which can just sort of pass by without a fuss yeah, we've got I 17 can... cowering at the foot of the mountain i love how the cowering's in brackets almost like the parentheses in a movie's uh subtitles or something you know but this does have a fear attached to the sound and lyricism but also hope and fucking resolve it plods and progresses like as though climbing the mountain itself and at the summit here God, it's so necessary at this point of the album, honestly. Even if most of the instrumentation right at the back end of this track is just sort of, you know, you could almost cop it out and just say it's just post-rock by the numbers. It really is a resounding climax, though. It's fucking wonderful how that lead just ascends and ascends and wells into, you know, feedback. Yeah, the devil I walked mean. in the woods, and yes, boys, the end of the album's finally here. <laughs> Back. Yeah, suddenly because of the climax of the last song and how it dovetails into the start of this acoustic looping strumming here, I feel excited for the last breath of this album. The song with the way he uh, sings in this echoey sort of church leave and reverb and bare bones guitar. It feels like one of those old Bush uh, folk songs by fucking, I don't know, Banjo Patterson or some shit that we make up in our musical fucking Australian tradition over here. The cleans, however, that finish it up, I just don't enjoy them at all really that melody is just it's entirely too predictable at some points and i just don't i think he needs some vocal training to be honest the yeah, album overview well there's two fucking albums here but fucking here we go there's so much frenetic energy scattered in all of the instruments uh musical phrases here in the first half especially in the drummer's feels and that kind of thing i love how this dude has an ear for instrumental layers and textures to flesh out the album's atmosphere and uh variability which is so often lacking in this genre however having said that on so many occasions in the first half the rich layering and the technicality and instrumental diversity is sucked out by a mix that is so consistently dissonant and with a bad sound system and at a low volume it can just completely bury uh, certain elements make them sidewind through 
oral cracks that don't really even exist. Personally, I actually do like the production. I think it adds to the immersion and I especially enjoy it with the headphones on in my car though. <laughs> and immersion is definitely a big factor in this album's enjoyment. As with any album of this length, you have to be immersed in the, in the concept, in the feeling, in the sound. But I really do feel Winter's bite in every track here, whether it's a slower, more downtrodden cuts on part two or the blizzard ridden fucking black metal black metal tracks on the first this is not however an album that you can conventionally sit all the way through just because time exists and you've got fucking responsibilities <laughs> but i'm sure if i did it would remind me of the assassination of jesse james especially the americana and bluegrass influence and the unfolding narrative that swells and breaks into quieter modes and uh, a couple moments in part two is definitely where I felt the album lacked a lot of momentum or direction, almost deliberately in a way, especially in the first quarter. The vocals on at least a few cuts here just really just, he sort of hums along in this passionless baritone, not really with a melody, not building into any emotive climax, and instead relying on the dark underbelly of the track to carry the bloody evocation. In any case, it is uh, a few songs too long for a conventional album listening experience at least. But yeah, also considering the bleakness and minimalism in at least a third of the songs here, you felt like it could have done with a little extra shove, push, an extra dimension, or at least truncating. But honestly, part two is just a great beer companion, and it makes me feel excited to unpack this album and others in this style in the wayside of the fires I just sort of have in winter. Well, the Australian version of winter, you know, fucking not quite as white capped and fucking snowy sounding as this shit, but fucking cold enough. I should reinstate though, I really do have a lot of love for this album. I think it's so immersive and dissonant. Was burgeoning rare qualities such as the, the bluegrass strings and the Americana influence here. Yeah? And there is no lack of ambition, no lack of emotion. You can feel the dude's heart is just woven in here at some points. It really is in so many ways the window to Winter's Soul and the Dude's Soul, uh, seemingly as well. Now, what would I rate this album? Smug a little sip of my water before the official announcement. Ah! Um, okay, now nah, just fucking four point. Four point ah! three. Done. Easy. Honestly, I really do love this album in so many ways. It's just fantastic in so many ways especially the first half my god and i did love autumn eternal i did love fucking roads to the north so fucking easy boys i hope you enjoyed my review if you're new just fucking leave feedback if you want fucking comment or leave a like and help me out it all helps the channel grow i love you blokes and just uh yeah just have a good one all right then catch you later Wow. fuck